Automobilista 2 has a lot of different GT classes, all ranging from GT1 to GT5, but you also have a few other things in between. So today I'm going to see which one is the best. So I have Automobilista 2 up, I also have a spectator watching me whilst I'm recording, so let's get into it by starting with GT1. Okay, so... Now we are driving in the GT1 car. So what differentiates this one from the older style, no, the newer, more modern GT classes, is that this is doesn't have any electronic aids such as traction control or ABS, which means it's quite a bit harder to drive which you could see a little bit there but what it makes up for that is it this is more closer to actual prototypes because these yes had to be made for road had to they had to make road car versions of them like the CLK which I'm driving but they weren't like your standard Mercedes GT3 car which you could which has quite looks quite a lot like a road car this one actually is quite a lot different but then when we are talking about the car driving characteristics well as you could see it's quite a bit harder to drive then otherwise it feels a little bit slidey but that's AMS2 currently and it feels quite planted even though it doesn't have any traction control so as you can also see from my times I might not be the most competitive driver currently but I really like this class due to as I said it's more prototype nature of feeling and everything even though the most modern prototypes have electronics and negatives I don't really know what to say I mean it might not be as refined with the tires and everything since it's a bit older but I can't really specify anything that's just a comment I have which I can take from just knowledge but still F1 cars and everything used to be quite a lot more high-tech than now, sort of, with Formula High-Tech, as you saw. So I think maybe, as I said there, I don't really have any bad po new points to talk about. Let's jump into the next class on our list, which will be GT3s. But since this this game has two GT3 classes. Let's jump into GT3 Gen 1 first and into another Mercedes. Okay, so now we're driving the GT3 Gen 1. So it's quite a bit newer. I think 20, 20 years or something around there. This obviously with it being newer, has some other things to it. As I said before, it's more closer to the to a production car than the previous version, or I would say the GT1. But it obviously isn't like straight from the factory production car. This car also has traction control and ABS, which are quite nice to have when driving a car which is quite heavy and feels a bit like a boat. Now any other comments about it? Well, this car I've always felt it's a little bit bouncy. What I mean by that is like when turning it feels bit bouncy not as much now but it's always felt a bit like that then any other real 
things which I really like, except the TCN ABS, which are actually quite nice to have. I don't think there's a lot. Well, the engine sounds quite cool. That's roughly about it on the positives. The negatives, as I've said, I don't really like these a lot because they have a lot less downforce and they feel a lot more sluggish and boatish. So what I mean by that is like when you're driving, they feel heavier, less pointy. And that's something. I, and they aren't really as high tech, even though they have traction control and ABS. And I really like high downforce, high tech cars. So this one is worse than the GT1, I would say. But since we have driven this car, let's drive its younger but better little brother. So now we are finally in the GT3 Gen 2 AMG GT3 EVO. And this car, it, since it's the little brother, it feels quite the same but also different since this has a few more years for develop uh, to take a few things and develop from it will feel a bit better but as you saw there didn't seem like it and yeah except like this car being new and having different things in it the other difference i think is the tires because these cars are following IMSA spec, which IMSA is a very famous North American racing series, which you should have heard of from my, one of my previous videos. But then the GT3 Gen 1 follows the Brazilian Endurance series, where all, a lot of the prototypes come from in this game. So this car definitely feels feels a lot more edgy and what I mean by that is it's the tires lose grip quite a lot e for, uh, earlier in slides than the previous car which you can say is good but what I just noticed through here is this car feels quite a bit yeah as I said slider so it also feels a little bouncy in a way I mean but that is how it's like when you turn it's this car has low dampening I should say because it feels like it moves around a bit like that when driving and doesn't fully like go where you want it to go so a bit less pointy and yet the braking performance isn't as good but it could be the tires I don't really have a clue there. But yeah, I think with this GT3 cars, it's quite obvious how they feel like, as I said. So now let's move uh, down the ladder to GT4. Okay, so we are now driving the Ginetta since this is, there is a class called Ginetta G55 GT4 Cup or something like that. And it's basically this car. So I thought, let's drive it. And it's the first time, I think, which I've driven the GT4 cars in this game. So you get to see very raw, a very raw feeling. And from just the start, they feel a lot more planted, yeah. Okay, so less planted than the GT3 Gen 1s but in a way actually no they do have a lot more grip it seems so these are actually quite fun to drive or I should say more this car yeah, I could go on the throttle a lot earlier than I could in like the other GT3 cars. This feels a lot more fun actually. Yeah, 
through the oh my god if i did that in the previous guy would have actually spun or lost the rear quite a bit again T abs doesn't feel as intrusive there i know it might sound odd but these slower cars actually feel quicker and better than the than the faster cars they raise a really done something good on these and they feel very as i said very planted it feels a bit like v1.6 with these cars in terms of the grip you have even though these are not on v1.6 physics so that's very interesting but here i feel that they're not going as fast as the gt3 cars they definitely have less grip. The braking performance feels amazing on these cars. These cars are really good. So, I must definitely try these cars in the beta and see how good they are. Because, oh my days. This might be one of my favorite slower cars because i obviously much prefer faster cars but this one slower feels fast and handles very well but unfortunately the show must go on so we have to go to the gt5 okay so another car i haven't driven is this GT5 class. This is, if I understand it correctly, the little brother of the GT4 car. Yeah, this definitely feels slower, but it feels quite a lot the same as the G55. This is the G40, I believe. So what's special about this one? is that it also feels very planted. Then it felt like, yeah, I lost grip. Okay, yeah, it feels like I can go very quick with the brakes. I need to shift down a lot more. It seems like this engine revs very slowly. This car feels a lot like the GT4 car, but it's a little bit too slow. Because with the GT4 car at least, it felt fast, it felt very quick. But with this one, oh, that was a nice turn actually. But with this one, it doesn't feel as fast. So that I would say an issue. Though the braking performance feels really nice on this car. Shifting very late in the rev range to try and have the revs keep be a bit higher. This car has, doesn't have ABS which is interesting too. Or TC it seems. Yeah, it doesn't. I didn't check the dashboard, which might have been a bad decision. Okay, let's see. Can I go... How fast can I go for here? Yeah, definitely doesn't have the grip. And how much damage did I do? Doesn't feel like a lot. Maybe slid a bit too much through there, but still quite alright. So yeah, this car feels a lot like the GT4, but not as good because it's, it doesn't feel as fast. So now it's time 
to go off to a quicker car, the GTEs. Okay, so now we're driving the GTE car, which maybe should have been put in a bit earlier in this video since it's quite fast, but wasn't on as high up on the list. So this one should be roughly a bit more like a modern GT1 class. I think this was based on the old GT2, so maybe a little bit slower. Ooh. Yeah, this feels a lot like the GT1 class, but more modern, since it feels a bit more refined in the handling. Yeah, it definitely feels like you can push this car a lot more without it bouncing. driven this car class though, but it was quite a while ago. Yeah, it goes very fast around there. I definitely can go a bit quicker through there. Yeah, I'm 1.1 seconds down. With the braking performance there I could uh, should have braked a bit earlier so it seems like when you get braking hard it uh, isn't as good but when you're braking medium for a medium speed co corner it's quite good yeah like through here just turn in a bit more and there so this car feels very pointy and very planted which is something I really like but then if we think about any negatives... Hmm... Negative could be how fun it is, maybe, because it wants you to drive even more. But no, yeah, as you saw, the, the heavy braking performance is definitely not the best. So that will lower its points. Could be a bit my driving, but for this video we try and remove that out of the equation. Cross the line, yeah, quite a lot slower. But hey, it was fun. And that's the point of driving, isn't it? So now we should drive... I think it's called the... Yeah, GT Classics. We'll have to see, but an older class. Okay, so before the GT Open class, we will be driving the last real GT class, in my opinion, which is this class called GT Open. So it has the Ultima, GTR I think it is, and then you have this uh, Ginetta G55 GT3. I've never driven this class either, but I have high hopes for this Ginetta. Quite a lot of understeer to that corner, which is maybe not the best. Well, it isn't the best, but it feels a quite a lot like the other Ginettas, but of the amount of understeer in this car is amazing. And not in a good way. I thought this doesn't have as intrusive of a TC like the other cars, but after looking through there, if you just look at the throttle, it definitely has a very intrusive TC. The braking performance is on par with the other Ginettas, so that's at least good. But this car feels a lot faster. That's one positive too. Because I like cars which feel fast. Not only should they be... F they can be slow, but if they feel fast, then that's what I like. Like when I drive on my scooter, my moped, it's not very fast. It goes like maximum 30 kph. But that thing, when I go on it, feels fast. 
that's something I actually really want. This card does feel fast, and that's one of the main strong points it has. The noise too is actually quite good. Anything else I have for this car? I don't think so. Feels quite fast. Feels a lot like the GT4 car, but it has a lot of unders there, so it's definitely not so good. So now, I'm going to jump into the GT Classic, and that will be the penultimate car. The last one might surprise a few of you, and for a few of you, it might you might see the car and you will go, Aha! Yeah, I remember. Okay, so now we're in the GT Classic, and we're driving a car which I've actually driven before. I think it was last year I drove this car. And it's the Chevrolet Corvette in GT Classics. So something which my I pointed out to my spectator was, that was I didn't really like. So you might see that I'm driving again on this part, and that was because I crashed. But to, re to repeat what I was going to say was, that uh, I pointed out to my spectator, which I will talk to, to, to you about now, is that I don't really like manual cars because I'm slow in them. And a lot of them just doesn't, don't feel very fast. Like this one, but it can still be fun. So this one seems to also have a lot of understeer. But it's also quite soft in terms of its uh, suspension and damper system. Which is to be expected with older cars like this. But is it fun though? Well, the engine sounds very good. It's a classic American V8 engine. But also, it's also from a classic brand. A a Chevrolet, but I would say it slides a bit too much from my point of view. Maybe it will improve with V1.6, I will have to try it in the beta, but otherwise in here comparing it to the other cars, it doesn't feel the best. That was also quite funny, that I was sliding the rear, felt like I had controllable oversteer, but then I had quite a little bit uncontrollable understeer. So it feels like that Ferrari F1 car, which they say, oh, the only car which had understeer and oversteer at the same time. Well, it felt like I was doing it there too. I had understeer and oversteer at the same time. Engine, oh my God. It sounds amazing. Well, my dad would say, oh, it's bad for the environment, yada, yada. Do I think I can? No. So, do, should you care? No, because it's only a game. In real life, should you care? No, because it's only a race car. A V8 engine sound cool. So, I think I've talked about everything regarding this car. Let's jump into my final car, which I said might not, not controversial, but a lot of people might forget a little tiny detail. So as you see, some of you, I'm driving what they call an AMS2 and an LMDH car. But what you should remember is that they suffer called IMSA. And there, they don't call them LMDH cars, they call them GTPs, which stand for Grand Touring Prototype. So these still count as GT cars in my books. So what do I like about them? Well, they're high downforce, quite high-tech prototype. Will be more high-tech when the new V1.6 update comes around, since, as you saw, we will get the, elec the electric engine uh, start 
thingamajiggy where you drive an electric and then it goes bang and the engine turns on but you will also get a proper properly simulated brake by wire system but without brake migration which i've nagged crimson about and he has said that they might implement it so let's see when they do then any other thing about this well as i said it has a how it's a high downforce prototype so it's very pointy and quite stable and this car also has it doesn't have ABS, it has traction control, so going out of the corners, it drives quite a lot better. But still it has a few nicks and bolts which I don't really like, but those are mainly due to the AMS2 V1.5.6, I think it is physics. Oh, I could go there. Yeah, the brakes aren't a strong part in these cars but that has been pointed out by many drivers that the brakes are a bit weird in these cars so that's something to get used to but also ams2 or i should say razor have come that there will be one more car coming with alpine no, in the form of an Alpine LMDH car. I'm just going to say that it sounds awesome. I haven't driven it yet. I'm looking forward to driving it in the beta. I was so close to leaking something there to, uh, with, to tell you about something else, which might or might not be coming. But that's the only clue. Something else might or not, might not be coming from... Uh, from AMS, no, to AMS2. I mean, there's a whole endurance pack and they have had a few leaks. I've, I, I have shown in the forum that the Lamborghini might or might not be coming due to one of their pictures. We'll have to see about that. But I'm just going to see if the Alpine will be the only car, if the Lamborghini will come and how they will drive. But from driving here, these cars feel very good and I really like them. So now let's get into the conclusion where I summarize everything. So now we are done with all of the cars. So what did we test? We tested the GT1 which I really liked. You had the GT3 Gen 1, GT3 Gen 2, Gen 4, Gen 5, no GT4, GT5. You had GT Open, GT Classic, GTE and gtp uh, in at the end so when we think about it gt1 felt a little bit more old school but quite fast and quite grippy gt3 gen 1 felt quite planted but not as high tech as the gt3 gen 2 which felt a bit more edgy gt4 very planted felt quite fast was really fun gt5 was a bit too slow to my liking GTE was quite fun, but the braking performance, if I recall correctly, could be a little bit better. Then GT Open felt a lot like the GT4, but suffered from understeer and oversteer at the same time. And then the GT Classic, it's an old school car with a big V8 engine. I think that explains everything. And GTP, very grippy. But a few things with V1.6 will make them a lot better. So which ones I would I say are my favorites? Well, GTP, GT1. And then actually, I was thinking at first maybe GT3 or anything. But I would actually say the GT4 car, the Mercedes, was very fun. And I would put them in the order of GTP, GT1, GT4. So that's what I think. What do you think? Comment it down below. Once you're done there, please hit the like button and also subscribe. My next video, we'll have to see about it because you never know whenever Renato Simeone might drop his dev update from out of nowhere and then I will have to go through it and then they will maybe announce a circuit which is beep or another car which is beep. I'm obviously putting the beeps in because I don't want to leak anything and then get kicked from the beta. 
I think my spectator thought it was quite funny. But until then, I've been Racing Legend. You've been my amazing voice. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.